I listen to a lot, a lot of different stuff. Um, probably my, one of my biggest would be uh, Jeff Porcaro, was really a major influence on me, not only in how I play, but in how I live. Um, you know, he was like a second father to me. And, uh, and yeah, he just had a way of, uh, of commanding a room and a song and, you know, like no one else has. So he was a big influence. Um, and then as far as guys that I also listen to, um, you know, Stuart Copeland, um, Terry Bozio, uh, wow, lots of people. Um, Danny Carey from Tool, I like him a lot. Josh Freeze, you know. I listen a lot, man. I love, I love all kinds of guys. So, yeah, those are some of my biggest influences, though. Yeah, cool. Um, I think that's a very good question, because I'm not thinking, you know. Um, what I'm doing is, uh, you know, my father has a saying, um, which is that music visits us. That it's not something that we can generate, but it's something that comes to us. Um, and that you have to be kind of open as a filter, you know. Um, and the more you can let it go and just let it happen is, is what, what that was. You know, I was, I was nervous. I am still nervous. But, uh, but at some point, you just kind of have to let it go and, um, and explore the instrument as much as you can, you know. Yeah, so that's, that was my only goal, was to uh, just try to explore it and, and be in the moment. Um, I think, uh, you know, music is, is the best way to express any and all emotions. Um, I happen to be a very joyful guy. I have a lot to be joyful for. Um, you know, happily married, um, successful in what I do, able to support myself. So, but I've also found myself able to express anger and love and, you know, all, all of the above, you know. Um, but yeah, I think, um, yeah, again, music is emotional. I think uh, it's one of the best ways that we have to communicate with each other without without words necessarily, it's a very universal language. So I try and approach what I do like that. You know, the biggest, the biggest thing for me was just listening a lot. Um, and I played along a lot with CDs and, or cassettes really. Um, but uh, I found myself, um, not only listening to just what the drummer was playing, but listening to what the vocalist was doing or the guitar player and, and really feeling like, like even though it was just me in a room, I felt like I was in that session or on that stage or in that situation. And um, really tried to concentrate on how everything balanced and how what the bass player did affected what the guitar player did. And, and where the drums fit within that. Um, I think a key to that is uh, simplicity. You know, um, for the most part, when I'm playing with other people, I try and really stay out of people's way and support, because you know, the drums are the foundation. Um, and so that's, that's kind of, uh, you can't be a solo instrument, you know, all the time anyways. And when you do do something spectacular, it's nice to have it set apart from, from the rest of what you're doing, you know, because otherwise it's all just a mass of information and it's kind of hard to sift through, at least for, for people who are listening. So, um, but yeah, I don't know that there's a specific style that, that brought me to where I am. I think, again, like being a filter of a lot of different styles, you know, listening a lot to the Zeppelin or the Beatles or the police and, and just kind of little by little either what comes out is yourself or a nice amalgam of, of all that, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, the first approach would be, um, well, okay, um, it would be to 
find out what it is that uh, the artist or the producer want, what they're looking for, and being well versed in in different genres. You know, if it's a country song, if it's a rock song, punk, funk, whatever. You know, you need to kind of know what you're after. Um, the you know, I'm I'm a big believer in uh, lyrics and what's being said and not getting in the way of, of lyrics. Like, I love playing songs with lyrics more than even instrumental music. Um, so, you know, it's, it's it, every situation is so different, but it would definitely um, be about, like, I actually, like I was just talking about with how I used to play, and practice at home, which is to listen to everything that's going on, figure out how to support without getting in the way, um, and and being really simple. You know that really helps a lot. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I guess again, it would go uh, to like the guys that I listen to. Um, you know, I listen to to Josh Freeze a lot. I listen to Kurt Piscara a lot. Um, Matt Chamberlain is another guy. Um, wow. I don't know. I really like Radiohead, so I like that. Phil Selway, I think is his name. Uh, Danny Carey from Tool. Um, well, I don't know. Uh, Jim Keltner, definitely a hero of mine. And I'm psyched that he's going to be here today. Yeah. It's fun. It's been a while, though. I haven't played with him. God, what do you think, David? Five years? Six? Something like that? But I'm excited to play tonight, though. Yeah. It's, it's something that I still haven't gotten over, which is really cool, because it's nice to, to, to go to work and be a fan. Um, but those two guys in particular, Sting and Paul, are, uh, are beautiful gentlemen, um, and they have an ability of accepting kind of who they are and who, what they represent, and in such a way that's very disarming. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to get jittery, and then within the first handshake, they, you feel like that's your friend, and and you guys have been hanging out forever, you know. Um, so uh, it helped a lot with Paul uh, that the first thing we did was work on a record together. So it wasn't me trying to play Ringo songs or stuff like that. It was, you know, us working on his solo record and him wanting my creative input and, and us getting along that way. So that definitely uh, put it on a different level than you know, the, the absolute freak out. But I, I will admit, I didn't sleep at all the night before. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, you know, yeah. But I can sleep a little better now. <laughs> um, I've, I've never played with James, um, uh, but yeah, there's a, there is a whole, I mean, you know, every generation there's, there's a new group of musicians and there are a lot of, uh, you know, sons and daughters of, of greats. Um, so yeah, I've, I've done some, uh, I don't know, like there was a, at one point I was, when I was playing with Seal, um, the band, uh, the keyboard player was Jamie Mahoborak, whose dad, Larry Mahoborak, used to play with Elvis. Um, the background singer was uh, Susanna Melvoin, whose dad is Mike Melvoin, who, you know, major session guy, played with, I think, like the Beach Boys and all kinds of people. Um, so there's, there was, it was really cool to be in a band like that, uh, you know, where, where suddenly we're exchanging stories about our fathers hanging, you know. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely getting passed along, you know. Yeah. Um, no, um, you know, definitely a little, I mean, it's a lot to live up to. Um, it was just interesting that a lot of the circles that I've been in uh, were, are, are kind of unfamiliar with him. Um, so, you know, like a lot of like guys like Paul or, or, or Sting really didn't know about my father until having met me. Um, but, you know, it, it depends on, on the situation. Uh, 
but yeah, you know, I, I, I try and make him proud every day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's, especially on, at that level, sometimes the recording of an album will, will get done about three or four times. Uh, it's, it's very strange sometimes. Um, uh, like, example, um, like the Vanessa Carlton record, that one song, Thousand Miles, um, we did that easily in five or six different sessions, you know, where we would go back and really get that bridge better, or we'd go back and work on the intro, and, and that was just the drum session. Um, with Fiona's record, it was a combination of, I think she felt a bit lost in the record that was made. It's a great record that was made that John Bryan produced with Matt Chamberlain on drums and all that. Um, but I think she took a step back and took about a year off of recording um, and then went back in to record with a friend of mine named Mike Elizondo, who's a great producer, bass player. And he ended up producing the, the finished product and he hired me to play drums and Quest Love played on a couple songs and you know, so it, it, it just took a different, a different turn. Um, but that really happens more often than not. I'd say easily out of the sessions I do, 75% of them never get released, you know? And I do, I do quite a bit. So it's, it's, it's just one of those things that you just never know. You're in the studio, you're making music, but sometimes it'll never see the light of day. But you gotta keep trying. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I tune my drums. Uh, I love this kit. It's uh, the DW Classic Series, which are like uh, the mahogany and poplar shells. And um, yeah, you know, I, I, uh, I'm madly in love with them, actually. In fact, don't even look at them. No. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, they're, they're a lot of fun to play. They have a great tonality and... and uh, and yeah, they're, I, I, I love them. I don't know, I can't say enough about them. I get, uh, I guess bored isn't the right word, but I like to challenge myself to um, not get too comfortable with one particular setup. Uh, so yeah, uh, it depends on the gig I'm doing. Um, you know, like uh, with, with Sting, it was a little bit more like this setup with the extra tom. You know, sometimes I'll, I'll just have a, a simpler set. But uh, yeah, it just depends on the gig, you know. With Paul, like, my cymbals are huge, and you know, I normally play a 24-inch ride and a 24-inch crash and, you know, kind of bigger sounds. And with Sting, I tend to put some splashes and do, do other things, you know. So it's just it's a matter of keeping, uh, keeping involved and not getting complacent. <laughs>